while he was running for office, President Trump, well, he wasn't president at the time, but Donald Trump said that he wanted to end the Johnson Amendment, which basically is the amendment that guarantees that nonprofit organizations like churches cannot endorse candidates. They cannot, endorse, they cannot get involved in politics to an extent. However, it doesn't prevent you from talking about issues. I mean, we're a nonprofit organization. We're sponsored by a nonprofit organization. Um, and we've always been able to talk about issues. And so has every pastor. Uh, if you're if in front of your or your church and you want to talk about you know your opposition for abortion or your support for a woman's right to choose, you can do that. So there wasn't anybody going in any church and censoring pastors. What it was was an attempt to keep churches from endorsing political figures. And there's good reasons for that. One is that churches are nonprofit organizations who also don't have to open up their books, which means if you allow churches to start endorsing candidates, that is an avenue for a ton of dark money. Hey, I'm a billionaire. I've given as much as I can in these other areas. So now I'm going to go give a million to this church, a million to this church, a million to this church. Then they get to use that money to support my candidate. Plus, they have a captive audience with a person of authority telling them what they should do. This is a ton of problems. The Johnson Amendment is an incredibly good thing that protects us all. Uh, I think a better solution would be to make churches actually start paying taxes and open up their books, and then you get to talk about whatever the hell you want. Um, right. And we have more money for, like, oh, I don't know, if a church catches fire, even though they don't pay taxes, the fire department still shows up and puts the fire out. Uh, but that's a, a different sort of thing. And, and, and nobody's preventing churches from reorganizing as a lobbying group and going after, and, you know, Yep. Having a different tax status, they, yep. they're welcome to do that. Create they're a secondary just, organization. That's right. They just shouldn't shouldn't get the benefits of being churches in that point. So after promising that he was going to end the Johnson Amendment this past week, President Trump had like a big get together. I think it was probably in the Rose Garden because for whatever reason he 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 loves to go out there and act like he's doing something. <laughs> and so he signed an executive order that was presented to the religious figures there as if it was pretty much the end of the Johnson Amendment. However, if you actually read the executive order, it's pretty much nothing. As a matter of fact, several of the organizations, the ACLU, and came out and said, basically, this is a press conference with absolutely no teeth. And even the, the uh, religious organizations w weren't particularly happy with it because it's written in such a way that it keeps the law intact. Nothing about the Johnson Amendment changes. And it doesn't really have anything that's going to dramatically change. It Basically, we have a position where I'm going to destroy this now means I'm going to submit an executive order with no teeth that reaffirms it. And hell, if he keeps doing that, I might have to vote for him at some point. <laughs> I mean, hey, let's, let's, let's keep these yeah. protections in place. The, it's... The executive branch doesn't get to create laws or change laws. Yeah, right? it, it's, it's one of those things where virtually, six. virtually nothing happened. Um, but I'm happy that people were paying attention enough to at least be in a slightly watchdog mode. Because if somebody told you, hey, we're going to end this Johnson Amendment that's going to allow just oodles and gobs of dark money to go flowing through churches to candidates when we already have it's problems with Time to pay money. attention to that, for sure. We should definitely pay attention. But don't read a headline develop your reactive, uninformed position, and then go out and start screaming that the sky is falling. Because there's enough real crap going on that yeah, if we just waste... just wear yourself out for the real fights. You will burn out and we will waste time and energy on things that actually aren't currently in danger. So that's, that's my note on, on the Johnson Amendment. And by all means, go read what organizations like the ACLU, the Freedom for Religion Foundation, the American Atheists, others have to do. Because the initial response was when he announced this executive order... The, all these organizations were going to sue. And then when they saw the text of the order, it was like, oh, wow, this was a publicity stunt. This was not, yeah. nothing changing yeah. the actual law. That's, that's his talent, right? But, <laughs> but let's go have another campaign. Right? And, and see, <laughs> even if he hadn't done that executive order, I'd still be allowed to say all the things that I just did because I'm talking about the issues and I'm not telling you who to vote for. Right.